Good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be back and to meet with the uh, European Council and um, to address uh, the importance of uh, cooperation between uh, the European Union and uh, NATO. And uh, closer cooperation between the European Union and NATO has always been important. But it is uh, even more important uh, now uh, for several reasons. First, uh, uh, because uh, we face new security threats. Uh, we see terrorism, hybrid threats, cyber attacks. And this uh, combination of uh, military and non-military means of aggression uh, creates uh, new challenges both for the, for the European Union and for uh, NATO. And uh, neither the, the European Union nor NATO has uh, all the tools uh, to address these threats. But together, we can be a formidable uh, force. And therefore, I welcome very much that, uh, together with the uh, High Representative Federica Mogherini, we were able to agree last week on more than 40 concrete measures on how to strengthen uh, the cooperation between the European Union and uh, NATO. On cyber, on maritime, on hybrid, on exercises, and in many other uh, areas. This is a concrete uh, follow-up of the declaration I, the, uh, I signed with uh, uh, presidents, uh, the two presidents, uh, uh, Juncker and uh, Tusk, uh, uh, this summer in July. The second reason why stronger NATO-EU cooperation is so important uh, is the fact that uh, the European Union is now uh, stepping up its efforts to strengthen the European defence. And I welcome that. More uh, European defence capabilities, uh, more defence spending in Europe, uh, stronger European industrial base for the defense industry will strengthen the European Union, it will strengthen uh, uh, Europe, and it will strengthen uh, uh, NATO. But we have to make sure that uh, we avoid duplication. Uh, we uh, must complement each other, not compete with each other. Uh, that will be uh, like competing with ourselves. Uh, if uh, the European Union and NATO starts to uh, compete. And that makes no sense. And the third reason why NATO-EU cooperation uh, is so important is uh, the importance of the transatlantic bond. In times with uncertainty, like uh, we see now, we need strong institutions. We need institutions that build the partnership between Europe and North America. And NATO is there, and uh, we need fairer burden sharing. We need uh, increased defense spending among uh, European allies, and we see that that is now taking uh, place. So I look forward to meet the European Council, the European leaders, and to uh, address these issues uh, together with them, because uh, stronger NATO-EU cooperation is as important as ever. Uh, the NATO-Russia Council uh, is uh, an important platform for uh, dialogue and uh, I have invited the members of the NATO-Russia Council to a meeting on Monday. We will meet at ambassadorial level and we will meet at the NATO headquarters. We will uh, uh, discuss, address uh, topics of relevance for uh, European security. Uh, uh, importantly, uh, Ukraine and uh, uh, the NATO-Russia Council is uh, a platform for dialogue. We have suspended uh, practical cooperation with uh, Russia after the annexation of Crimea, but we uh, have maintained uh, open channels for political dialogue because when tensions run high, as today, it's even more important to have direct dialogue with uh, uh, Russia. Secretary General, the Dutch TV, uh, yeah. just a minute. Secretary General, our Prime Minister Mark Rutte, he holds a very important piece of the geopolitical puzzle in his hands, don't you think? Well, uh, if you refer to the discussion about uh, uh, the relationship between, between Ukraine and the European Union, that's for uh, the European Union uh, to uh, decide. But what I can say is that uh, NATO cooperates very closely with Ukraine. Ukraine is, uh, uh, is an important partner for uh, NATO. Uh, and for NATO, it is an absolute fundamental principle that every nation has the right to decide its own path, including what kind of security arrangements 
or alliances it, it wants to be uh, part of. So uh, uh, whether Ukraine is going to become a member of NATO or not is uh, up to Ukraine and uh, the members of NATO to decide. No one has the right to veto uh, such a process. No one has the right to intervene in such a process. Uh, the focus of Ukraine now is to reform, <laughs> is to modernize its defense and security institutions. And NATO is supporting those efforts uh, with practical and political support, and we will continue to do so. What would be your message uh, to the leaders on Aleppo and what's happening in Aleppo? Um, the situation in Aleppo uh, and Syria is very fluid. And uh, what we see now is a horrendous uh, humanitarian catastrophe. We see the killing of civilians, we see uh, suffering, and we see that innocent people are, uh, are trapped uh, in uh, parts of uh, Aleppo. So the focus uh, of the whole international community has to be on how can we ensure uh, full respect for a ceasefire, a sustainable uh, ceasefire, how can we uh, assure sa safe evacuation of civilians? And how can we ensure uh, the delivery of humanitarian aid uh, to the people uh, in Aleppo? This is the focus of uh, all NATO allies today. Uh, NATO and NATO allies strongly support all the efforts of the uh, UN to make this happen, uh, both the ceasefire, the delivery of humanitarian aid, and, of course, the evacuation of uh, of uh, civilians and uh, this will be the first step to a more lasting sustainable political solution to the conflict in Syria. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.